Hello and welcome to Ask Ms. Mears, where we answer your most burning questions and solve your most nagging problems. I won't always know the answer, but I'll know someone who will. As we all grapple more than ever with the uncertainty, loneliness, and social isolation this pandemic brings, even the strongest and most independent women are struggling to keep mentally and emotionally healthy. Our guest today says that like her, we can use this hiatus away from the world to learn how to really sit with who we are and learn to love our own company so we can own our power and thrive under any circumstances. Please welcome back to Ask Ms. Mears, licensed and registered psychologist, founder of Healing Minds PH and COO of Well at Sea, Ms. Gisa Paredes. Hi. Hi, good morning, everybody. How are you? I'm good. It's just one of those days where you get dressed in front of your laptop, but you I know, know. you're wearing shorts right down there. So. Right. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here again to help us cope with all the mind-boggling matters of the time. So one year later, how are you? Like I told you, I was struck by your Instagram post where you said that the pandemic gave you a chance to really look within, grow, and rebuild yourself. And most importantly, you learn to enjoy your own company. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I mean, one year later, um, you know, this time last year, I left my condo and I went home to my parents' house. And I stayed there for two months. And after two months, I told myself, okay, I have to muster the courage to go back and be with myself. Um, I didn't know basic skills like cleaning and cooking. <laughs> so I told myself I had to learn those things. So I took it on as a challenge. And as I started learning, I started enjoying it more. And then I also started realizing that, oh, okay, I could get myself organized. So I guess in the last, how many months already? 10 months, 11 months, um, there really has been a lot of things that I guess I started taking on by myself because I knew that I would have to rely on myself in this period. But also, you know, a year later, you realize that you don't feel as anxious as you did the first time. Of course, right. the pandemic is still there, but th this time you kind of already know. Hopefully right. everyone already kind of feels like, I know what to do in this situation. I know how to wear a mask. Most right. basic thing to keep us safe, right? Right, but it wasn't easy, right? You went through the struggles that most people living on their own or even people who have company but feel alone are going through. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there are days where um, you don't feel like you can talk to people or because everybody has their own thing going on, you don't know who to reach out to. You know you have friends, you just don't know if everyone is available. Or right. sometimes it can be the opposite. You don't feel like talking to anybody. And that's right. okay too. Um, whether you are living with family, there are days where you don't want to have to deal with them. Or if you are living alone, there are still days when you don't want to have to deal with them. And that's that just happens. Right. For me, the hardest part is living inside my head. Maybe because I don't talk to so many people. I'm having conversations with myself. And it's like uh, breathing ground for doubts, anxieties, insecurities. What can you say about that? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, since the start of the pandemic, we've known that we really are our own enemy. Right. Um, and this isn't just true about the virus, meaning, you know, who has it? Do I have it? Does the next person have it? Am I a carrier? All of this. You know, I remember when this all started, we described it as a mind game. You know, we aren't just up against the virus. We're up against ourselves. Like you said, you kind of get stuck in your own thoughts. You kind of spiral. You, you have conversations with yourself. You're trying to convince yourself that things right. are whatever, whether they're better or worse or something. You're trying to convince yourself of something and that's why you're having that conversation so you know right. it's quite easy to lose ourselves and feel like you know we've lost our energy we've lost some sort of power or sense of control or our basic sanity basically with everything that's going on in our inner and our outer world there's just so much right you said it's something you like to ask your clients and audiences or what is stressing you out? What are your current sources of stress? And what are they usually? Yeah, so I mean, most of my audiences would say that, you know, the current stressors right now are relationships, of course, whether that's a relationship with yourself or with the relationship with other people, um, work, the pandemic itself, of course, yeah. uh, family, 
pre-existing conditions. Yes. You know, everyone is so concerned about, oh, I have this condition or someone I know has this condition and that's totally stressing me out or I can't seem to do anything because of it. And of course, isolation. You know, isolation from people you used to see, a life you used to live, your neighbors. I mean, when you live in a condo like I do, normally you would talk to your neighbors, but now when someone enters the elevator, you leave. Right. Because you don't want to have to be in the same elevator as them. You don't want to have to have a conversation because, you know, right. droplets, all of this. So isolation. And yeah, again, you don't have to be living with yourself. Isolation can be felt. You can feel lonely living with other people. Right. I think even introverts are very challenged. Like I know introverts joke a lot about, so what else is new, right? But I think even the most introverted of people will be very challenged. So what is the meaning actually of enjoying your own company and why is it an essential skill, especially for women? What is the meaning? What do you right. mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to enjoy your own company? Like in your own experience, what were some of the realizations that um, you arrived at and how did you learn to like yourself? Oh boy. Well, I, I gotta say this. I don't <laughs> like myself every day. <laughs> right. I don't like myself every day. That's there so are, too. Yeah. There are things that like you really got to face. And I think right. that's it. I think that's the meaning of like what it means to, what was it again? Sorry. The, the, the whole sentence, what it means enjoying to enjoying your own company. Enjoy your own company. You mentioned you need to sit with who you are. Okay. Please unpack that for us. What does that mean? Yeah, so I mean, the meaning of really enjoying your own company is first understanding yourself, um, being able to have some sort of compassion, okay? So if any of you have ever gone on a solo trip before, and I'm sure some of us have, you know, whether it's like right, a day right. away or two days somewhere or a month long of just traveling somewhere, you realize that when you go to a place that's far and that you that is unknown, there's no one else really there that's going to help you right. except yourself. Of course, right. you can ask strangers along the way, but then sometimes, you know, you're being the typical maybe Asian. We, we, right. we feel shy, right? right? So right. you have these conversations in your head while you're going through a train. So I think it's kind of like that, that it's kind of like traveling to an unknown place and all you have are yourself, your resources, and you have to take care of yourself. Okay. Um, you asked me, we have to be able to sit with who we are. Well, for the last 11 months, I realized that, you know, living alone without the pandemic is so different from living alone with it. But, you know, and being single is totally different in a pandemic from being single without one. Right. It's also different for women with children. So the challenges that you face are just so much more different, like we said. And, um, this time we really need to be able to sit with that, meaning right. no more distracting ourselves and escaping through friends and right. events. Back then, being single and loving it and all of this yes. you know, empowerment was, ah, F it, I'm gonna, exactly, I'm just gonna go to an event, yeah. and a party, I'm gonna drink this out, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy myself and I'm gonna deal with this later. But now, everything's kind of coming to the surface. Chances are, there are elements of yourself that you know are really coming up that you haven't had a chance to really explore previously. So right now it's catching up. Right. And this is the time to sit with it, not right. fight it. You, right. I mean, self-compassion is about being able to sit with yourself like right. you would in a video call, only you're just looking at yourself and right. being able to have that conversation. So whether we live alone or with our families, how do we deal with everything, right? So that voice inside your head, you can't just shut it up anymore. You have to like listen to it and actually yeah. talk to it and converse with it. And how does doing so help you own your power? And what does it mean when you say own your power? Man, owning our power, like I said earlier, like, you know, these days, we kind of feel like we've lost some part of ourselves. And one of that is some sort of control. Right. Um, everything around us and what's going on, is it's beyond our control right now. Right. And that's the scary part. Um, power, sometimes we tend to give it out 
to a lot of people because people need someone to talk to. So yes, we share that with them. We share bits and pieces of ourselves. But and then we realize, oh my God, I didn't leave anything for me. So it's I would say it's kind of an exchange of energy where there's too much energy out. And right. to gain back your power means you have to have energy in. So if you're like a faucet where you know you're you have energy in coming from the dam, you know, like water coming from the dam, there has to be energy coming out of your faucet. But when the right. dam has run out of water, then there's nothing coming out of you. So owning your power is coming back to that. How can I fill myself up? And that of course is quite broad. <laughs> So how can we best, you know, deal and learn to like ourselves and, you know, thrive in these circumstances? Well, I put together three tips yes. um, for everybody. How to enjoy your own company and other ways of owning your power. Number one is to think like a scientist. Yeah. So first tip, think like a scientist. You know, every single day we have thoughts coming and going. In fact, neuroscience teaches us that 99% of the thoughts we have today were the thoughts that we had yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. So basically, we're just kind of automatic people right now. Um, and the same thoughts tend to lead to the same feelings. The same feelings will emit or give us the same behavior and outcome. And when we get the same outcome, that basically produces or brings us back to the same thoughts from where we came. So if we find ourselves in this particular pattern wherein we're kind of like going yeah, in circles ulit, ulit. around this, yeah, <gasps> pa ulit, ulit na lang, di ba? we need to be willing enough to dig into it like a scientist and explore the situation. You know, think like a scientist actually is what Adam Grant, um, psychologist and researcher, uh, likes to talk about in his newest book, and also in all of his podcasts. So I thought, wow, think like a scientist is like a great metaphor to use when being able to explore ourselves. Okay. So it's having that observer mind. You know, you can also think of yourself as like an investigator of like asking right, yourself, where is this like... coming from? Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So to think like a scientist is really to be able to question thinking and to be open to testing various modes iterations and I hypotheses that you have about yourself, about the situation, about the world around you. And in our case, when we are alone, what are the things that we can explore? So cognitive behavioral therapy teaches techniques in being able to parse, meaning paghimay, paghimay ng ating behavior. So being able to parse our behaviors into sections to help us see our Patterns. So what can we parse? Well, we parse our thought from our action. Okay, so those are two different things. So what am I doing? What am I thinking? We need to parse that. And then we also parse our thoughts from our action from our feelings. So those are now three things. And as well as the fourth, which is our physiology. How is my body reacting? So, um, you know, if you say I'm feeling anxious, where do you feel that? You kind of feel that as a knot in your stomach. Or you feel that as your chest kind of like tightening, that's feeling it in the body. In the mind, you're thinking, oh my God, what's happening to me? I think I'm going to die, right? That's a thought that leads to anxiety. So again, this is what we call a total behavior. So behavior isn't just made up of action. Behavior is the manifestation of all of the other elements that are combined. It's your thought. It's the way your body feels. It's the feeling behind it. And then it emits a behavior. Okay. Right. So for this purpose, to be able to think better like scientists, I created a tool called My Soul Briefcase. Okay? Yes, you did. <laughs> so yeah, so My Soul Briefcase is actually a self-help therapy card. Uh, sorry, therapy card deck. And it can help individuals who, like me, tend to spiral into, you know, thought patterns and to be able to dive right into the situation. So right here, we have a, a green card, which basically shows us where we can begin on the investigative process. And on the green card, it says, you know, all of this started when dot, dot, dot. And when it happened to me, I thought it made me want to. So again, action. Um, the emotions manifested in my body through, which again, feelings. 
And then as I reflect on it now, I'm thinking. So in this card alone, you're already parsing it. You're already right. moving things apart so that you can explore what's going on with you. So by parsing the behavior, we can understand our situation better. Here we can learn how to just be. Right. You know, being isn't just about sitting in meditation and breathing. Being can also be, can I be with myself right now and look at all these elements of me? Right. So by using this green card, for example, and parsing it, we can learn how to be. We can be present to ourselves, listen in on our mind, our body, and our spirit, if you will. Okay. So it right. all goes back to having a gentle curiosity towards what you are actually facing. So that's right. it, thinking like a scientist, number one. So don't uh, compile all your miseries and actually break it down into yes. what you are the components. Thought, action, what your body is saying, and what's the fourth? Um, your feelings. Your feelings. And this green card can help you do just that. So number two is reimagine your outcomes. Yes. I love number two, actually. So the premise of choice theory reality therapy is that we choose our way into situations to be able to meet a particular need. Okay, So right now we're seeing the yellow card on the screen. So my soul briefcase has four colors. Uh, the yellow card is really about exploring it further. So like I said, you know, like choice theory reality therapy is about choosing our way into situations. So no matter what we say about, well, the government put me in quarantine, that's why I'm like this, or my family forced me into it, or I got so angry I didn't have a choice, you actually right. did. Yes. You did have a choice, right? You reacted. Like I said, your behavior is the manifestation of all these things, the thoughts, the feelings, all of that. So the way you felt about something was what got you to the behavior, okay? right. and you chose it. So in however you act on your emotions, yes, you chose to do just that. So my second tip is about reimagining. So um, in therapy, when a client presents their current reality, their struggle or challenge or situation, I like to ask them, what would they want instead? Okay. In solution-focused brief therapy, these are known as miracle questions because they allow you to reimagine what else might be possible. So in this card, uh, we ask if a miracle happened today, I would be dot, dot, dot. I would have, I would be surrounded by, and I could listen to. So it's also um, igniting the senses to be able to reimagine on all fronts because we're, we're different types of learners, right? You have the kinesthetic, you have the auditory, you have the visual. So some people who are visual need to be able to see a picture. Others need to be able to hear it. You know, if you're auditory, it, it's a sound of what the what that miracle would sound like. If you're kinesthetic, it's an action. What would I be doing? So the yellow cards kind of also help you parse, but parsing in a way that you're now exploring different possibilities. Right. So Let's, what else? Yeah, go sorry. ahead. Could, could we uh, apply this hypothetically to our situation now? So if the miracle is, let's say, the pandemic ended, mm -hmm. then I would be, what's an example of that? Well, I what would, would you be, be doing? Yeah. I would be outside having a drink with my friends and catching up. Yes, I think I think all of us would be right. <laughs> uh, are, are like, you know, I could have perhaps well, if the pandemic was totally over, I could have um, time for myself, like real time for myself, wherein I know that I can go to the office, I can go okay. see friends, I can do all these things. And then I can set aside time for myself. Right. Right, right now, it's like, Time for myself and all of myself. <laughs> it's, right. too much. it's too much. I need to also kind of have other people. And right. for me, that's my reality. Right. And then I would be surrounded by friends, clean air, what? The hubbub, the hustle and bustle. Of the sea. The, the sea. Sand. Right, right, right. right. Mountains, snow. Right. I don't know. I'd be surrounded by so many things. <laughs> I hope to be wearing a winter coat at some point. <laughs> right. 
and I could listen to the birds. Well, the birds are chirping from the condo balcony, but that's not the same. <laughs> I could listen. I could be listening to a rock concert with other yes. people. I could but, be listening to like house music again in a club or hip hop. But how does this not make you feel worse? Because <laughs> it just makes you sad for not having them. Yeah. So okay. Basically, when we use the cards, we're going with a particular situation. So if you are diving into the green cards first. Um, Exploring a particular situation, meaning uh, something is rising in me. I'm getting irritated with people in my life, uh, or I'm turning into this monster. I need to explore that. Why am I becoming a monster, right? Um, and then the yellow cards are supposed to kind of come from the same situation. So here we kind of change the yellow cards completely. But if we were to follow the sequence, yes. Perhaps people will say, well, you know, if a miracle happened today, there really wouldn't be a pandemic. But that also shows you who would you be. And a year later, we already know that we're different people from 300 plus days ago. Right, right. So, yeah, what would we bring back? And that actually brings us to the red cards. So the red right. cards are the final piece of the puzzle, which takes us into action so it's really about wrapping up um the process um and here it says this is showing me that i can be responsible for dot 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 and i can choose to take action by so it's really about bringing back the power to you in the beginning you may have felt a little bit you know uh, out of sorts feeling like you don't have power for anything you've lost your sanity you have no more control but by the time you get to the red cards the red cards are meant to be able to bring the power back to you to allow you to make choices in the here and now, not in six months from now when we may or may not have a vaccine. So those are things you cannot control. Okay? But what you, what you can do right now in this situation, uh, whatever it is that you're facing, is what can you be responsible for? What can you take action towards? And how can you now create a plan that can support your reimagined vision? So that actually brings me to my final tip, which is we need to be able to realign with action. So now that you've allowed yourself to wear the scientist hat um, to explore what's happening within and around you, it's time to realign yourself with action. So where do we go from here? What actions can you choose? Um, can you set an intention and how? You know, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm going to set my intention for the day. but. Uh, setting an intention is different from doing things around it, right? And then right, being able right. to be consistent. So, uh, you know, living alone, like I said, isn't always fun. Uh, you don't always have people to talk to. You don't always feel like talking to people either. So when you've looked at yourself truthfully, hopefully you use my soul briefcase as a guide. Right. right. Um, and, you know, when you look at yourself truthfully and can reimagine the possibilities for yourself, then you can really align with what you want or what you can do in this moment. So uh, for this, I like, to call, I like to use a tool called um, focus wheels. Okay. So focus wheels are, um, you know, again, they're a basic tool. And the idea is that there is a wheel, there's a circle, and inside the circle, we put in... Um, the outcome that we'd like to connect to okay so learning what we are about in wearing a scientific lens means learning things about ourselves like you know i actually i realize i'm enough this is all i've actually needed myself uh, when we take a look at ourselves in a scientific lens we realize i'm actually capable of handling what i'm faced with right. i'm safe in my home and in my environment I know how to care for myself. I show myself compassion and so forth. So when we make our focus wheels, we can realign with the truth and essence of the outcome we want to become connected to. Again, so this is the circle and inside the circle is where that outcome that we want to be connected to goes in. Okay. So what's an example? An example of something I want to be connected to is I am leading with openness, honesty, and compassion. That's something that I want to focus on. It's an intention that's very direct. Right. 
Or another example would be, I'm a global leader in empowering the people around me. That's a major intention like that I have constantly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you so, are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, in, in everything that I try to do, I want to be this. You know, whether it's, whether it's talking with you and guesting on your show or, you know, doing Healing Minds or leading the work with Well at Sea, this is my intention. So, again, it goes into my focus. This is the essence of the outcome that I want to be connected to. I want to be, or I am, and I stated in the present that I am a global leader in empowering the people around me. So these broad statement truths are what go into the wheel. And around the wheel, we place several more statements that can support it. So you have your focus, and around it, I encourage people to write affirmation. Like, you can write anything. You can say, like, well, I'm leading with openness, honesty, and compassion. You can write affirmations around that. Like, I know what it feels like to be part of a team. I know that I am capable. I am enough. I am safe. I know how to care for myself. So these are, because these are affirmations that can help support that statement. And it's actually a very uplifting exercise that I like to do when I'm pretty high on reimagining because I've already reimagined where I want to be. I already reimagined the outcome that I like. And then when I align with my action, I can now see myself affirming that in the present. Right. Um, could you tell us about how this whole um, three-step process and the focus wheels, could you, if you don't mind, walking us through how you applied it in your own experience in that one year that passed in your journey to self-discovery and enjoying your own company? Sure. I mean, before the pandemic or before I even uh, made the cards, I was already doing some version of it. Um, so again, living alone means living with that voice in your head. And having to tame that voice in your head uh, takes a dedication and a particular skill. So what I would do before was I would get large pieces of paper and I would, um, I would become the scientist to myself. So, okay, right. yes, I'm a psychologist, so I kind of knew the particular tools. Like, what would I do if this was the client? And how would I walk through it with that person? So I would create behavior maps. <laughs> For myself. Wow. Okay. Yes. Um, and I would start there. I'd say, okay, what's going on with me right now? This is one behavior map. What is the behavior map that I want to see of myself? Then I create another one. So that's already me reimagining it. Um, other ways that I would do that were, again, you just sit in meditation. I just start, you know, closing my eyes, imagining. Um, sometimes we meet roadblocks, cafe. So let me take a few steps back. Sometimes we're met with rejection and we feel like, okay, um, definitely, I, I need to rethink how I'm going to get there. So meaning there is a dream and the dream is not yet dead. The dream is still alive. So one rejection doesn't mean that I can't get to where I want to go. I just need to recalibrate right. how I'm going to get there. I need to rethink, reimagine the message. So you may have this really great intention to do something good and big and wonderful, but if the world isn't buying it right now, then you have to adjust. If, it's, huh. if they're not ready for the message, you have to adjust. You have to adjust yourself. You have to adjust the messaging. You have to adjust the platforms that you're using. So reimagining that um, there, it's really just a visualization exercise. You know, and going back again to your action, your final intention or final essence of outcome that you want to see. So I guess for me, like I said earlier, um, I want to be able to empower a lot of people. But that's such a broad statement dream, and I can't do that by myself. So I've had to reimagine the ways that I would do that. I've had to rethink, okay, one was, well, I made a card deck. Another thing I used to do, well, uh, I, I used to live stream on Kumu all the time. Right. I did that for two years. Yeah. Um, and then there was also the program that I made for seafarers. But even, you know, dealing with the seafarers, uh, majority men, I couldn't get across with them with, ooh, you know, just align with your chakras. And like, right. that wasn't going to resonate with them at all. 
it had to be grounded. It had to be very, you know, related to their life. Right. Um, and I had to reimagine again my message. Right. How? What are some uh, concrete examples that might help the general viewership about how you made it relatable for the seafarers? Because I think for all the, how many people are watching? 3,000 people watching. Now, I'm sure if we say align with your chakras, I'm sure it's not going to resonate so much. So maybe uh, let us into the world of the seafarer and how you help them. With well, with the seafarers, because, I mean, men, they're very practical. I like to use a lot of imagery. So I can't go deep into the science either. I would be wasting my time having to explain right. the science and all of that. And it'll just sound like another seminar. Yes. Um, but because what I created with the seafarer is an entire program, like a behavioral program um, that's long. It's as long as three years, actually, the program. So it's getting them into a behavioral pattern. But again, I use metaphors. So one thing I like to talk to them about is, like I said earlier, you're like a faucet. So you have energy in and then you have energy out. How they understand that and how they apply that, well, we, then we start discussing. And then I relate that to the actual, okay, what can happen to you if these things, okay? We also talk about stress and how that impacts yes. them. For a seafarer, um, the major sources of stress are ship operations, people on board, because, I mean, you don't know them from Adam. So you get along or you don't get along, right? Uh, families, uh, sorry, problems from home. And right now I'm forgetting the fourth, but there is a fourth. But normally it is centered around, you know, their work environment and how incredibly unique that is. And all the pressures that come from them, that come to them from the outside. Right. So how do you make them reimagine their outcomes? Would well, we, yeah, we work on a lot of like cognitive behavioral things with them as well. Um, on the get-go, I do a lot of um, team exercises. So right now we've launched our program on more than 300 ships. And wow. we don't have, yeah, we don't have that luxury of being with them. Right. So I cannot run an orientation live. So we prepare all of this material for them. And the first outcome that we ask them to do is to create um, a team commitment. Okay. So that team commitment means what are the outcomes we want as a team? And depending on the energy in the team at that time, you'll see the answers. Some people will say, well, we want a team where people, there's no bullying. We want a team where people respect each other. We want a team where people um, basically support one another. And again, they're talking from their needs at right. a particular time. And then we ask them, what, what are the behaviors that will help you to get to those needs? So those behaviors are, well, we'll spend more time together. And again, th that comes from them. We'll spend more time together. We'll um, reach out to one another. We'll ensure that we do the wellness exercises that are sent by Gita, um, you know, things like that. And then we ask them, okay, create a grading system for yourself. We know that they're not going to do this every day, but at least have some way of reviewing yourselves as a team. Did we, in fact, do the behaviors? Are we reaching the goals? Are we the team that we envision ourselves to be? Right. So on our own, we can just uh, look at the cards in your briefcase and kind of have like a uh, Gisa in a briefcase. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's the whole intention really to be able to have like a mini therapist. We've had someone write to us and say, I did the cards and it was like having a mini therapist with me. So that, that's really what it's about. I'm not there to be able to ask you the leading questions, which we usually do in therapy, but the sentence prompts are there to guide you. Right. So I'm flashing the information below if they're interested. Uh, some of the things we also talked about before the show was uh, some practices that you suggest, like practicing contentment. Um, this is hard in the time of social media and comparison being the default mode like you just scroll through instagram and you can yeah. see everybody has 
200 more abs than you and they wrote a book and they launched a podcast and meanwhile you're like living in your head and feeling just so what left behind how do we yeah. deal with that well you know one of my favorite things i heard at the start of the, this pandemic was from Deepak Chopra and he said there are 7000 ways to shine our light Wow, the, seven, seven, not seven thousand. Sorry, seven billion. Seven billion oh ways to shine our light. Okay, that means that each and every one of us shines our light differently. So, Mirza, you're shining your light right now through the show. Um, I used to shine my light in the same way, but I stopped. Meaning, that's not my right. shining of light right now. My shining right, of light right. is somewhere else. Whoever is listening right now, the way that they're shining their light is by supporting the show by listening to us. Um, Sending us taho or something on Kumu. Yes. I don't know what I don't Thank know what you. the latest is anymore. Diamond, so, yeah. Art. <laughs> <Let's on. laughs> so you know, but um, shining our light can be in many different ways. Shining our light can be you can be that person that makes a lot of people laugh. You can be that person who sends a cake to your friend when it's their birthday in quarantine. You can be that person who puts together a PowerPoint presentation for the team, or that person in the team that's completely quiet but does their work and does right. it efficiently. So there are 7 billion ways to shine our light. And another thing that Gabby Bernstein said recently in a podcast was, you know, all this comparison, um, we need to be able to make peace with today. And that, yeah, I think that's really what contentment is about. Can you sit with yourself and say, I'm going to make peace with today. I'm content with what I have today, right now. Like right, right. now, as I sit on this chair, I feel content because right. that's all I'm doing. And I don't have to be anywhere else. I just have to be in this conversation. Right. And how is it different from gratitude? I think they're, they're related, actually. Related. Yes, yes. Contentment and gratitude are related. I think that when we learn how to sit in contentment or just learn how to be with ourselves, we realize, ah, that feels nice. I am grateful for this feeling. I am right. grateful for, you know, you look around you. Right now, I'm looking at the, my space. I'm looking out the window. And every time I look out the window, I think, I like looking out the window. It feels nice. And you can whisper silent thank yous to yourself. Right. I'm grateful for this, or thank you for this, or thank you, self, for giving me this. Right? Right. You also talked about developing discipline. So be content and yet be disciplined enough to what? To do the work. Well, yeah, well, being disciplined enough to do the work, yes. I think that's already the hardest part. But being disciplined is. Um, you know, being able to create something around your day. So for some people, it's as basic as making your bed in the morning, getting up, having a cup of coffee, having a cup of tea, um, having three meals a day. It's that basic discipline. Wow. Make, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Hydrate, especially now in this pandemic. Take your vitamins. If you haven't already started, I hope you are. Um, take care of your body. Basic discipline. If you're the type that likes to be active, then work out. Have that discipline of moving your body daily. Um, and then, of course, when it's uh, matters of the mind, it's the discipline of confronting yourself. Yeah. It's the dis discipline of, okay, Gisa, we need to sit with this. What is going on? Right. As you would somewhat anyone else in your right, life. Right, right. What is going on? We need to, we, self, we need to talk about this. <laughs> And get to the bottom of it. It's not. It's not easy, but you know, whatever insight you're able to derive, hopefully, it brings you to an aha moment. Right. And all this is possible when you have a clear vision of yourself. How clear must the vision be? Like, <laughs> well, it can without, be very without broad. having impossible standards that will make you yeah. anxious. It can be very broad, but it can also be very basic, meaning a clear vision of yourself is your identity. Who are you right now? What are you resonating with? Are you the type of person who's resonating with uh, pajama pants and tank tops? 
That's okay. You know, are you the type of person? Because a lot of people are resonating with different things right now. Are you the type of person that's resonating with PPE suits, PPE dresses, um, you know, um, remade, you know, fashion or something like that? Find, you know, th uh, there are these like oracle cards that I like to use. And one of the cards say shape shifting, meaning Ooh. we're in a time now where we can kind of reinvent ourselves. You can try wow. on different fashion. Uh, you know, fashion ways that you want to express yourself, put on different clothes, put them together, see what that feels like. So having a vision of yourself is, okay, how do I want to present myself? Let me try like baggy jeans again, 90s look. <laughs> you know, that resonates, right? Or I can go totally 60s um, <laughs> wife. That's having right. a vision of yourself. So like, what do you want for yourself right now? It can be super simple um what do you want to get by with today do you want to be able to produce your work do you want to get done with the project that's as good a vision as you can have right right bigger ones would be oh i want to be able to contribute to the team i want to be able to do this i want to that's great too just write them down so that right. you remember right it's important to write it down right i keep of hearing course. that yeah <laughs> It's, so it's good to be able to have our thoughts somewhere. We got to take right. out the, they're abstract when we leave right. them here. When we put them on paper, they become concrete. Um, when we imagine them as particular images, they also become concrete. Right. Do you recommend journaling for this purpose so that you can do a brain dump? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, there are many times when I write and write and write and write and write. And then when I'm over it, I just tear it apart. Okay. So some people may not like the idea of journaling, meaning you keep all your thoughts there and then... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Some people like that. They like going back to it. But some people may be like, okay, I'll write it down. And then when, I'm, when I've let it all out, I'll burn it. Or I'll just right. throw it. So it's, a, right. it's some sort of ritual of now letting it go. Letting right. it fly away. So nailabas mo na. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. And then this uh, next step that you mentioned, I think it is a source of stress for many Filipinos, given our culture, setting boundaries. And that's hard Ooh. in a small space with a close-knit family or an extended family. Any tips? Yeah, well, okay. If you're going to talk about closed spaces um, and boundaries, it's also letting them know what your schedule is right i think families can start with that i remember when i was staying with my parents my sister um we had to find way of course we would get into arguments and then there was nowhere else to go except <laughs> us right? right because before when you would have an argument with people you could go somewhere you can I mean, i'm gonna out. leave the house i'm trying to go do something else right and <laughs> we would again we would escape it and it would be so easy but then I would find myself in situations where, oh my God, we're having arguments and it's hard for me right now, but I can't escape it. I need to be able to sit with it. So I, ha I would have to tell my sister, oh, I'm sorry, I think I heard you differently. Oh my God, that would be so hard for me. Yes, it would be hard, but then I would say, I have to try. I have to try. I would, I would try and respond or, yeah, sometimes we would really shout at each other, but at some point, I think we would just set the tone and say, this is my schedule today. I have meetings from this time to this time. I have lunch from 12 to 1, 1 to so-and-so. And it doesn't have to be so structured. You can just say it in like a ranting way, like, ah, oh, so tomorrow I have all these things. And blah, blah, blah. But at least uh, okay. you're already stating it. Right, and they right. know where you're at. If you're right. not stating it, then you're going to have them, you know, just keep coming right to you but you know at some point we also got that group like oh, okay yeah yeah she she has a meeting we have to remember that or you know you'd be calling her for lunch you're shouting and you're like oh i forgot she has a meeting or you go upstairs and you see oh, she's in a meeting right? right so that's one way of establishing the boundary let them know what your schedule is like Right. What are you get facing? Up, get up the internet. <laughs> yeah. What are you facing? What's what are the important parts of the day that are coming up or of the week? That's one way. Um, 
also establish a boundary with your social media. How about parents, parents. Parents. What about them? <laughs> what about them? Uh, it's hard if you live in, under the same roof. They'll say, as long as you live under my roof, and now there's no choice, right? How do you navigate? <laughs> you know what, though? I think that that has kind of. Parang now it's baliktad. Baliktad. We are parenting yes. our parents. <laughs> We're parenting the parents because ah, remember in the start of the pandemic <laughs> when they wanted to go out and they I were know. the ones that were being stubborn. Right. Mm. So I think we've all had the chance actually to <laughs> parent the parent. I, all of us here, I think, have gotten that experience already. Good. Whether we're living far from them or we're living in the same house as them, I think we've all managed to throw it back <laughs> in the pandemic. Silver lining. You also mentioned that Filipinas have a hard time speaking up, dreaming big, and believing in themselves, which you've noticed. Yeah. Not to generalize, um, but I think in general, yeah. we're very yes. non confrontational. We are non confrontational. Um, they know things in concept, meaning if I read it in a book, I know it's wrong like let's say harassment. Okay. Yeah. So that's actually something that I talked with my team about recently. Um, we were talking about the issues of women that we think are present in the world today. But um, yeah, when I dug deeper, it was okay. So how do you understand it? How would that show up in your life, for example? So yes, we're non-confrontational. Um, what were the other things I said, Mirza? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Uh, dreaming big. Um, I think we're also, society a, as a whole, parang, and we see this for many, hanggang dito lang ako. Yes, actually. Hanggang right. dito lang. Or Bakit? like, oh, how dare you, parang asa ka pa na yeah. ikaw, yeah. diba? Yeah, or like, what, how can I dream like that, eh, ganito lang ako. Right. 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 So I think that's also, um, I think it's also part of the disease of this system that because we're so, uh, how do you say this? We're such a collective society that yes, we have yes, to adhere yes. and all of that, that I'm thinking it also affects our independent thinking, our right. thinking that we can actually do something apart from the norms that have been given us or that are right. expected of us. Right. There are many and things we can do. What's a small step that every, everyone who is relating to this situation do? Like, I'm um, too timid to speak up, or I don't mm. dare dream that big. Or there's, mm. even a, there's even a saying na umasa lang ng ayon sa ganda. Like, bakit feeling mo maganda ka ganun? Feeling mo right. mayaman ka ganun. And why do we like to do that to each other? Right, right. So maybe step one is don't do that to each other. <laughs> yeah. But also if you're on the receiving end of it, um, I think I would say get clear in your definitions of all of that. Get clear in your definitions of love, success, um, respect, any of it. Get clear on that. Because when you're clear on what success means to you, it really doesn't matter what another person says. Success to one person might mean several right. zeros. Right. And that's society's definition of success. My own personal definition of success is when I'm able to have a fruitful conversation and feel like I've managed to empower another person. Whether it's one person or two or three or like 6,000, it doesn't matter to me for as long as one person feels like I made a difference today in right. however way. So that for me is success. And I've always gone by that definition. So right. what is your definition of success? I would start there. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to you know, work or have good work or produce good work? Is good work by the standard of whoever is dictating it? Or is good work because, of course, there are standards. You have still have to produce good work. But then... On a deeper level, what does that mean to you? And how can you now align? If you're, if you're out there looking for a job, I think that's a good place to start. What is good work? What does that mean to you? It's a good question to ask yourself well, when you're in an interview. That ideal job that you want, 
connect right. with also what is ideal work for you. Right, right. And if you are, if you feel constrained in your own circles, like you're always inundated with expectations of the certain world that you're in, or you know, you're made to feel inferior, expand your world, right? Yes. Maybe read or up also on, perhaps question yeah. that circle. Right. What is what is it about that circle that you now need to question and go back? But you're right. Read up on other things. Expand that world. Right. Expand um, your knowledge base is very important. Right. So just to um, recapitulate <laughs> your three-step tool, um, number one, think like a scientist. We, um, gather our hypotheses, test our actions, iterate our plans right observe your own like pretend you're a specimen and you are exactly taking, taking down notes about yourself and your behavior yeah and well we'll never really know when something is truly right until we try and execute so thinking right. like a scientist is again iterating right. having hypotheses approaching it in different ways Right. Then and only then will you know, like I said, shape-shifting earlier, then and then will you know what that vision is for yourself and how you want to reimagine it. Right. So maybe if I stress eat during the pandemic, what other thing can I try? Maybe move my desk out of the kitchen. <laughs> First like that. what was it doing there? <laughs> <laughs> because there's no space. And so oh, okay. yeah. the kitchen table is my desk. <laughs> Number two, reimagine your outcomes. Yeah, so, you know, living in our heads won't really launch us into action. So uh, reimagining where we want to go, uh, what we want to be able to see is very important. So after living like a scientist, reimagine where you want to go now and then try and execute that. Right. And of course, very important, realign action. Yeah, so, you know, it takes a certain kind of willingness to be truthful, compassionate, and open with ourselves, to reimagine and to realign. So, you know, um, this is actually how we truly step into our power, when we go out of our heads and do something, to be able to match the vision of that intended outcome. Wow, I don't think we can end it any better than that. Thank you so much for giving us the tools and teaching us the mindset we need to step into our power through these tough times. Uh, please invite everyone to um, follow your social media and please do show us the soul briefcase again. I'm sure a lot of people are very intrigued. Move it closer to the camera. Is this good enough? Yeah, there you are. Okay. Yeah, many... so please follow my soul briefcase. Um, it's made in the Philippines, but it's actually now available in the Philippines, in the US, in Europe, wow, in Australia, and in Hong Kong. Yes, there are 50 cards in the deck. There are the green ones, the yellow cards, um, the red cards, and the ones I actually did not show you earlier were the blue cards. And the blue cards are images because our subconscious mind likes to speak in images. So wow. that's it. So it's My Soul Briefcase on Instagram. You can also find us on Facebook. You can follow me on Healing Minds PH. Or you can add me on LinkedIn. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. It's the same, Gisa Paredes. Great. Thank you so much, Gisa, for coming back once again to Ask Miss Mears. And I hope to see you again soon when we need to unpack Yet another mind-boggling issue of the day. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mirza. Bye, guys. All right. Bye.